Hey there, Chrissy here, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am creating this card today, and I create it for Lawnscaping Challenges, my favorite challenge blog out there, and I'm going to show you how I created it. So, um, I decided to go with the current challenge, and it is ending soon, but I use it as my inspiration, and it's the Calling All Critters Challenge. So, like most of you out there, I'm sure you have a ton of critter stamps by Lawn Fawn. And so I decided to grab one of the set, stamp set that is traditionally more of like a fall set. And um, it's springtime right now. It's May in Chicago. And so I decided to try to use it as more of like a spring or a summer type card. Or just kind of like a general card. But um, I really like stretching my sets, even if they're for specific times of year or holidays. So I wanted to try and do that. So what I did is I stamped the cute little fox um, onto my card base. And then I went and I stamped it also on a post-it note. And then I'm going to do what's called masking. And um, masking is really simple. You don't even have to use a post-it note. You can use a um, like a piece of printer paper if you want with some repositionable tape if you don't have any post-its laying around. The idea is that you're covering your stamped image so then you can put stuff around it like I'm doing or even stamp on top of it. And then that original image is not ruined. So I should mention that the stamp set I use is the Into the Woods stamp set. And like I said, it's kind of like more of a fall type set. So I went and I stamped it, and then I um, stamped it again on the post-it note, and then I trimmed it out. And you really want to try to get as close to the black lines as you can. Um, you can use a die cut uh, if you have a coordinating die, but it's going to have that like little white space around it. So it's not going to be exact. So then I went in um, with some Distress Ink. And I used the peacock feathers, and I you just saw like I did it kind of in a circular motion, and um, then I just flipped a little bit of water on there, and I used a heat gun to go ahead and speed up the drying process. Water reacts with um, distress inks, so that's why I went and um, I, I added the water because I love that kind of like fun little splattery look. So we're going to stamp a sentiment. Um, but first, what I like to do, you can see there, I, I try to keep um, my masks. Now sometimes the post-it uh, gets a little unsticky, and then I have to redo it. But for the most part, I keep my post-it notes um, with my stamp set. So you can see I stamped the sentiment there. There's my head getting in the way. So this is why you should always use the Misty. <laughs> I did not use my Misty tool, and I had to re-stamp it. But it ended up coming up, out just fine. I didn't have any issues. Sometimes it's kind of hard to align those stamps when you don't get a really good impression the first time. So this meant that Misty tool is a great idea, but I got lucky, and it was okay. So then I just went and I colored everything in using some colored pencils and some blending solution. I'm using Spectrum Noir products. So I'm using the um, blending solution, which is also Gamsol. And I'm using just a few colored pencils, and I'm using the blending stumps. And um, you know what? It's, it's really easy to do. Um, you don't even have to color in the entire image. What I tend to do is kind of go around the areas that would be the shadows. And then using that blending solution, I can kind of pull the color towards the areas that would be the highlights. And I mean, it, it looks nice even if you leave a lot of white. You don't have to. You can also add other colors. And then also, once you've added the blending solution to an area, and then if you color over it again, that color is really vibrant and a lot more saturated. So it's also another good way to get more shadows. So um, once I was done coloring in the box, I went ahead and I grabbed... Um, the grassy border die and I just die cut it on two sides of the paper and I left the paper a little bit bigger than the actual die so it would stay on the paper because I knew I wanted to go ahead and add some distress ink like you see me doing here and what I'm doing is I'm just um, I'm going to have most of the color towards the top uh, where like the the tips of the grass would be and then it fades out into white so um you can also do this before you die cut, but for me it's easier just to see like where I'm, I'm going to be die cutting to do it after. Because if not, I might not get the color or the die cut in the right spot or the die cut could move. So um, I just left it, like I said, I left it on a bigger sheet. And then that way the die also isn't moving around. It stays on that panel and you don't have to worry about it moving constantly, getting on your fingers, whatever it might be. Even though I use a surface and on craft mat to protect my surface, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, so my little trick is I glue it down first and then I trim off the excess edges. Um, 
that way if you know if I cut it first sometimes I kind of screw up and then it doesn't cover up the entire card and I end up having to redo it so I'd rather have too much than not enough so then I just trim off the excess and it makes it so much easier for me so you can see I did two layers there, kind of like the back one and then the front one. And the front one I left a little bit light towards the bottom. I wanted to give it like a little bit of dimension just using the inks. So it kind of has like a shadow, or a, I'm sorry, a highlight in the front and then the darker shadows are in the back. So I just mounted it to a standard sized card. Um, that was a piece of eight and a half by 11 cut in half. So it's four and a quarter by 11. And then I went and I scored it at five and a half inches. And then this way I have a standard top folding card. So my last step that I wanted to do was just, I wanted to add a few little sequins on there. It just kind of went well. I have the splatters in the background. Um, I have the soft look of the fox. So I just wanted to add some kind of like iridescent sequins. So I just grabbed a few. Um, they're from Craft Medley and it's the black and white set. So this would technically be the white ones, but they are just kind of this iridescent color and they pick up the blue really nice. So I just stuck them on with some zots. Um, I have found this has kind of been my go-to way of getting sequins on because um, they're really small and I don't have to wait for anything to dry. So I really like it. So um, I add them with tweezers as well. So that's the card. I hope you'll give masking and coloring with pencils a try. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.